Welcome back, guys. I'm um, Zainab Ahmed Nasochi, and this is now we're talking. So last time, guys, you guys didn't even care to ask me how how are your eyes. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a flying fish about me. But I'm going to tell you, <laughs> my eyes are better, as you can see. We thank God. So today I have a very artistic, artsy, into the cultural arts. You know those type of people, now, those chic people that, that love arts and everything about arts. And she's really, really a cheerful soul. I'll let her introduce herself. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Sumaya Iyazijai. And um, well, they have been telling me what I'm going to tell you people, Sha. What am I supposed to tell them? What do you Just want to what you, what you do. Okay, so I am a curator and um, I create the Hausa International Book and Art Exhibition. I actually don't curate the whole festival. I have a partner at Adam and Fashi who we, we, we co founded the Open Arts uh, Development Foundation. And um, we do other stuff, not only the festival, we do open mic, um, film screening. And um, we're excited. We got a new space, and we are opening up in March. It's a very, in very Kaduna. Small, yes, okay. it's a very, very small space, but I will be looking forward to seeing you guys. Oh my God, <laughs> that's so lovely! I didn't even know all that. I always do my research, but definitely you can't get everything from off social media. This is so amazing! Like I'm so happy I have her here. Yeah, Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> Thank I'm God. happy to be here. So we're discussing entitlement today. But well, before we dive into entitlement this itself, I want to discuss your love for arts and culture. I I um, I love 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 cultural arts. Mm. I love everything from the colors to the stories, and the fact that the stories may differ depending on the person. A painting can tell a thousand stories Definitely. depending on the person. So Definitely. I'd like to ask you how you started, how you developed your love for arts. You already see that she's artsy, you know, <laughs> all colorful. I want to give it up to her. Oh, let's see how I started. It's a very tricky question, actually. <laughs> how did you? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's actually, it's like, it's like asking you, how do you? Like, how did you start cooking? If you're a chef. Yeah. So where are you just happy to be like, cooking now? Or you just no. My mom forced kitchen? me. No. <laughs> I was never happy to be in the kitchen. My mom forced me with insults and whatnot. I like, know yeah, my mom forced me. Okay, so no, nobody forced me into that. Yeah, definitely thing. you'd have. I, 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 I think this argument is that uh, artists made or artists born. Mm-hmm. Like there's a, a debate, a long debate that. Uh, artist born or mm-hmm. made uh, or made maybe mm-hmm. by practice and uh, working towards it and then you become an artist but i think it's it can be both ways mm-hmm. some people are just born artists and some people mm-hmm. just have to find their way mm-hmm. into art um but i think I'm, I'm a born artist i grew up loving to read first i i read a lot i love to read and uh, my art actually started with writing because i tend to write my emotions Right, how I'm feeling. Before I turned in, I used to write like that to my mom. She annoyed me, I'll sit down. I still do you it. Do I still do it. Do always do write when on my notepad. I write out everything. Okay, so I I used to write. I still do actually. But I, I, I feel like I have not been sharing. So I don't like to call myself a writer because mm. I have just published like one, two pieces here and there. So I, I don't feel um confident to call myself an artist. So you I are. just... Um, a writer, not, not an artist. I don't feel confident to call myself a writer. I I like to call myself a curator because I just like bringing things together. I like organizing. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things that gives me joy. Um, so I just found myself doing that. And then when I went to school, I studied literature. And then it just became natural for me to to do art stuff, to just organize art stuff um, and find them. Because when I came to Kaduna in around 2014, yeah, when I think so, I don't know, but I was looking for spaces, literary spaces to enjoy the, the purple silver. And then, short after that, did you get spaces, the spaces you're looking for? Yes, there was a purple silver where they do weekly uh, open mics. Mm-hmm. And then, before you know it, um, the Yasmin Arabai Foundation was set up, 
and then I was a regular there and then I even volunteered and worked there for mm-hmm. a few years and then before you know it I was in the scene and um, we set up and right now fire uh, open art is going to be five years in March when we are opening up so I just found mm. myself in the streets and that's it you know I've been lost <laughs> this is the first time ever that my guest is outshining me with talking <laughs> So I'm 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 I'm, get, I'm I'm enjoying every bit of it. Please carry on. So do you do you paint? Yeah, but I I you don't, don't <laughs> you don't bring it out. So it's just people that will paint no, and hide not, it. it. You know, I, as a curator, my my one of my mentors will say that you have to know um, a bit of what you are organizing. You need to know so I know I I can paint. Mm-hmm. It's not. I'm a very bad thing down so I'm you, a good writer. It's all left for you to say, we haven't seen the paint. Who, who are you to judge your painting? Actually, was supposed and to you know, judge and them. And you know, art, art, art is actually very, very subjective, like you said. Um, it's people that will look at it and say, this is what it means. Yeah. Um, art, art creators and art critics are the ones that look at paintings or art and say, okay, this is what I see. Poetry is also this. a form of art, right? Yes, poetry is also yeah. a form of art. So they, they, then they'll interpret it they mm. are the owners of the artworks, mm. not the owner. I not love the interpreting poetry. The... <laughs> I think it's all love it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's really a nice feeling to just see that you're giving things meaning. Meaning. You know, you should, you should write at oh. oh, God, can Zaina. <laughs> can I? Yes, yeah, you have it already. Okay. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll talk about that later and see where I can use my head. Yeah. So, um, since you started, what has been your highlights? In the cultural arts, okay, like my highlights, the things I'm very proud of. Yes, in, in the cultural arts, like since you started. Okay, so I'm very, very proud of um, the festival that we run, the Hausa International Book and Art Festival. Hausa um, International Book Art. Festival. Yes, Hausa International Book and Art, art Festival. festival. Okay. Kiba, mm-hmm. you guys can check us out. Hausa about on Instagram. We have dope pictures, cultural pictures, colorful, There's so much meaningful, sweet, rich culture. In yes, the world. yes, yes, yes. So, and then um, Kibaf always tried to bring it out, bring it uh, like because a lot of people we are missing this culture, we are like losing it, mm-hmm. and people are not very aware of most of our culture because uh, pop mm-hmm. culture is the new thing. Mm-hmm. We are always Taking watching over. movies and all of that, and we watch wrestling but this year at Hiba we brought the Dengue which is a local wrestling. I, I really Does it still happen in the villages? Yeah, some villages they still happen. But it doesn't happen in Kaduna like the city now. It doesn't but there is this people that used to do it at um um close to Daily Trust mm-hmm. office. So bringing cultural stuff, yeah and food and um ways of living because I like to like show kids what it was that we used to have before and we even document um, things like yeah. uh, the origin of Hausa people, mm. um, how Hausa people used to be and where they are so we mm. also have this conversation, it's not only the film screening that we had, it's also the panel discussion on who are the Hausa people. Does it, does it have to do with the something necessity project? I saw it somewhere. Necessity, positive, positive narrative uh, project. project. Yes. Uh, the positive narrative project is actually a very different project. Okay. This was born I'm from. Telling you. <laughs> <laughs> this is. <laughs> it was born from uh, the first festival when we had the first festival. Um, somebody said that um, people, musicians, are singing for king things, uh, kidnapping kingpins like mm. Turiji mm. and um, people are seeing them as saviors, people are seeing them as somebody they can look up to and then um, someone was like okay so why can't musician and artists do a counter narrative of this um, bad songs that are being sang mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Turiji, find a song with Turiji, Mazangwa and Mazangfama like who mm-hmm. are healing him mm-hmm. and this is somebody that is killing people in Zamfara and he's kidnapping people and collecting ransom and someone is seeing him as a hero mm-hmm. so right there um samuel arwan who is the yes yeah chief security <laughs> i don't remember the commissioner right he's the commissioner Kadu, Kadu, of, yes security something something i, I saw it recently but my brain is <laughs> my brain is shaking yeah, he's like the commissioner me. for internal security internal state appears I don't want to like any people. Oh, we, like you, you guys, are, yes. <laughs> we don't give you wrong information. You don't sign to, but he's a commissioner for yes. something that has to do with security. And so he um, supported the project that we should find um, 
artists, musicians, and poets to do a counter narrative mm. um, of uh, songs and poems um, that will counter narrate that those songs that mm. are sung for for uh, kidnappers. So that was how the positive narrative project came about, mm-hmm. and then we got some, uh, artists, some musicians, about almost ten, eight, uh, eight musicians, house musicians, musicians on, yes, oh, okay. and then two poets to do songs and poems on positive narrative. Okay, nice. Hmm. I could go all day talking to. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. So, no, and me, I don't talk too much anyway. She's just asking me what I love. <laughs> I would love to see. You. Talking about how we don't value art and culture here, yeah, no, and no. as much as you have a rich, a very, very rich culture, culture yeah. that you feel like it's comparable to the South, which I, I feel like um, all culture have interesting cultures, like mm-hmm. we have beautiful yeah. cultures, yeah. irrespective of where. No, even if it's a minority, you just need to look at it very observe it like we don't we are not we are very keen on observation i mm-hmm. think we just like to just assume things without mm-hmm. looking without looking at it very closely mm-hmm. um so we do this yeah, we do have a very very rich culture mm-hmm. and um it has evolved through time and yes like you said we don't really value yeah. it but as much as um we keep saying that people don't value it, people are shying away from it. Mm-hmm. It it also comes down to the fact that there are no spaces and like mm-hmm. there there are some people nobody is coming up to own it mm-hmm. and make people mm-hmm. realise this is mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. It's like what House Guy is doing, you know. Hausa Guy is doing amazing stuff with what he's doing the his Who's House has, Guy? What does he do? House Guy he's this guy that does um shows like this, but he's here he he does I just came across him. He's very interesting. He came for our festival. What he does is narrate stories in Hausa mm-hmm. and make them very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. And then you want to listen to what he's saying. Mm-hmm. And he makes news actually interesting. No, we don't like news. But okay, if, I think I've seen him. Yes, this guy. Yes, yeah, he, like he's reporting. Yes, news he's reporting with news. the whole background. And <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But in a funny way, in mm-hmm. a house language. Mm-hmm. But if if you are left, if you are left to your own device, as could not make NT and say you should watch the news. You won't. You would yeah. You wouldn't want to watch it. Yes. You'll be very very bored. But someone like that bringing it out with humor and. Mm-hmm. Um, with just gestures and all of the things he used, you'll be like, oh wow, yeah, like it has you'll, be you are, you'll be very, very mm. interested. Yes. So it's the same thing with um, what we are doing in open art also, like the, the festival, because you think that people will not show up, mm-hmm. people who don't like this thing. Mm-hmm. But once we have this platform, mm-hmm. we have over 300 people coming to the festival mm-hmm. venue and over 200 people joining online. So it's, it's actually, a, I, I it's a big festival, actually. To gather 300 people is not actually an yes, easy thing. Yes, it's not just something yes. you can just do. But then we have this platform, and mm. people are coming. It's like India Kali, Hawan Salla also. Mm. Each time there is Hawan Salla, how many people come out to look at it? Uh, thousands, billions. So it's because the platform is not there. But yeah. once every year, and I sell that the platform is there, people yes, come and they yes. troop to come and see. So I feel like what we how we don't have is the platform, and people also don't understand the importance. And also, as much as I try to think that we are, we are not conservative. We are conservative. Mm-hmm. We have. We are a very conservative society. People will be like, we should mean anyone. Go number a If you don't read books, you won't understand people. Yes. It's, it's what you could be in Nigeria, you. and books will take you to Australia. Thank you. And, and if you go to Australia, you already know their culture yes, because you've read, you've about, read it. about it. Yes. And it also makes you. I think it makes you a better person. Yes. As you read, you become more um, in tune with people's emotions. Yes. And then you understand that your truth is not the only truth. Yes. There are other people that have truths also. It's one of the things that we see as our aim with open art is to change is, is to use it as a tool for social change mm-hmm. because art has the power to influence people it has the power to change minds and narratives it's just the way that somebody sang the song for Truji and someone will listen to it do what you not know kidnappers in the and terrorists and even a uh, headsman somewhere mm-hmm. in in one village or inside yes. when he forest, listen to it because will has a phone and he will listen to it and it will influence him so say yeah, so that's why um we need to make um be very conscious of the the, the, the strength it's not only the strength of the power yeah, or the power 
that art has over mm. people mm. and if you know this power and you know how to use it mm. then it's it's going to take our society very because very because a lot far. of people yes, in the era that we're in how many people we every day you see posts about wazi and what no mm -hmm. shades to that it's a, an amazing way of mm -hmm. spreading mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. islamic knowledge mm -hmm. but how many people truly you like to go work and then i had even if subconsciously a lot of songs i don't have but i can sing them so yeah. why not use the same um, platform to, to change the narrative of yes. things you can? Yes, you need to also understand that we, we can't, we can't, we are people of the world. So, so we belong in this world. We don't live in Mars or <laughs> Uranus. So if people are going to look for something out there, then you should be conscious of that and give people something meaningful that is going to inform yes. their decision. It's going to make them be aware mm -hmm. of themselves and the capacity that they have it's just like watching American if, if we live there America America is a very trash place to mm -hmm. so say and what this this the story they sell <laughs> they so the story they sell and they sell themselves and they tell you that they are the best thing that now happened if you have to the a world. Blue passport you are feeling like you're on top of the world uh, so it's it's what they've been able to use um mm -hmm. th this power that so that the media has so which we have not been able to grasp it and understand that it's very very important to well see I don't get you uh, when they chase AJ, anything that has to do with arts, but I actually feel like, as you mean, since inception, it was done the correct way. I don't think a lot of people will be thinking that way, also. Kingani? the so-called Enana here, mm. assuming. Yeah, so I assume they don't know the power it she has. Is, they, they're not even the using it the power. right way. They don't know. the It's called soft power. It has, it, they call it soft power, but it has a big power because it changes mindset. So I don't know if you've seen the plan, the plan them. that Netflix, they've been hyping. Nasu mm. Ramasadao and, mm. okay, I like, it was really hyped. And, Basically, it's among you've seen songs of the caliphate, yeah. So, you know, that stopped years ago. Yes. So, I think they wanted to do something like it. like it, but there's no culture. I'm like, I think first episode I just stopped watching. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> if you want to depict a house of woman, depict it to the T, King Gary, all these is things. The, the plan on Netflix is it a series? It's a series, okay. but it's like a a movie in a series. In here, that here, normal uh -huh. movies here on Zoom. Is it the one that her husband died and she gave somebody the gold? The husband, the, the die is episode one. I stopped because I was just, it was not given. I was like, so all these things, as you mean, they actually knew they're spending so much money now for the aesthetics and whatnot. Mm. But the real content, if you want to depict, depict an evil woman, let us see the real culture. Kingani, so the Gaskia, what you said, like they are, they, they don't really know the essence of what they have in their hands yes, yes 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 a lot of us don't actually know you just need to be conscious about it i think it's something that it's just that people need to i think you need to like just observe like i said yeah. we don't we don't have this observation um speed or even mm -hmm. if not observation read yeah you read you find observe, out find yes. out but we don't do that we just uh, try to relax and just um go with it go with but now people. that you talked about netflix also it brought to my mind the queen i mean uh, netflix i didn't, I didn't watch it um, it was not, each it was time not nice, right? so sit down you said that is not very <laughs> this is not <laughs> as it's, it's yeah. actually didn't depict what is happening in Zozo? They should. He's he each time it annoys the, <laughs> it annoys the sorry, King Zozo. Each time he stands up on a podium because when we invited him for he brought also that was the same thing he said that we need to own our own narratives. Yeah. So it's not the white people that will come yeah, and tell exactly. our own narratives. Can you imagine? So we need to tell outsiders will come and telling you about your, your culture. culture. And it's they are just monetizing it because people want to see this thing. Yes. So we need people in our society so if you have an idea and you want to put it out there it's difficult you just need to choose your heart and once you do you just stick by it so culture it wants <laughs> to take out your culture and create content from it it's important you should mm -hmm. do it it's not only us that can just take the reins. Mm -hmm. okay we're doing this we're for doing our so society so we're so trying to change do a social re-engineering mm -hmm. of our society. I think each and every one of us have the capacity and we just need to be willing and choose our heart. She cannot. <laughs> Guys, she has said it all. So let's talk about 
Kashim Ibrahim Fellowship. Okay. So a lot of people don't really know about it. Yeah. It's a new initiative, as new as my marriage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what's it about? Because you're a fellow. She's a fellow, guys. What 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 more do you expect? She's a fellow. <laughs> so what's it about? <laughs> Yes, so she said as as young as her marriage actually we have the oh, 54 or 54 how, months, how the many years five years yes yeah this is the 50 years of the past tomorrow year. my i'll be five my anniversary is tomorrow yeah, congratulations thank you uh, okay so yeah almost yeah the same age, <laughs> same age. um so the cash with brian fellowship is a leadership fellowship that is um organized by the domestic government and it's sponsored, sponsored by the domestic government the program is a leadership program um, targeted um, uh, for youth between the age of 25 to 35. Um, it's a leadership training, like I said. Mm -hmm. So it's grooming the next generation of leaders to hold public spaces. Like Marlon will say that um, we are trained. People are trained to be surgeons. People are trained to be doctors. People are trained to be lawyers. Mm -hmm. But there is no training for leaders. They are just um, left to just when assume the role and just become a leader. Mm -hmm. So basically, the platform is just to nurture leaders that are going to hold spaces. It doesn't have to be public space. It can be in any position. So, but the main aim is hoping that they will stick to public service because mm -hmm. um, the. Fellowship is divided into four components. Mm -hmm. So they have the um, fellowship, which is bringing people from all places of, from different countries, states mm -hmm. <laughs> in Nigeria, and keeping them at a space, a place for a year. And then there is the um, education component, mm -hmm. where we are towards um, seminars, um, seminars, workshops. workshops. Um, and meetings like there's the brown bag meetings that we have with other MDAs and uh, the speaker series also mm -hmm. it's all form of leadership whereby they invite the people that are very prominent um in their field mm -hmm. and they come and then they teach you they teach you they talk to you mm -hmm. so by talking to you you are learning something mm -hmm. from them mm -hmm. and then we have the community service which mm -hmm. is it's a um, key component of the fellowship whereby fellows come up with ideas mm -hmm. and then the not just I any idea but idea mm -hmm. of impacting to the society to the community so you come up with a project and then you go out but the fellows are given from the no the price the, the fellows are going to come up with their projects really yes okay, so but I, I saw maybe they, they already have the project and the, the fellows will just no you come up, up with your project you search for the funding for the mm -hmm. project and then you execute it. For example, you can say you want to build a block of a uh, classroom. Mm -hmm. For 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 hours, we did we refurbished a hospital mm -hmm. that was at um. I saw in the classroom washing. Yes, yes. So it's all part of. So you come up with your own project, mm -hmm. and then you look for money to do mm -hmm. that. So it's giving back to the community. So we have you have two community service in the whole year that you are as a fellow. So you mm -hmm. come up with project and. <laughs> it's a nice thing giving back to the site, yes. but it's also like I said, it's a hard thing to go and look for money mm -hmm. to do a project mm -hmm. by yourself. And then the fourth component is so, what did I mean? Work placement. So while you are as a fellow, so mm -hmm. you are posted to MDAs, that's Ministry Department or Agency mm -hmm. here in Kaduna, so that you understand how public service works. Mm -hmm. So public service is the key component for the fellowship. But we also need leaders in all sphere of life. So this is not just public service that we need leaders. It's sounding to me like amplified NYSC. Uh, yeah, the only it's, thing it's is actually like NYSC. We don't go to the in the way. We're talking about making Nigeria a better place, but in spirits of elections, are you going to cast your vote? I will. I'm feeling like I shouldn't actually. Like I should just. I have already made up my mind. I'm but, not doing but I, it. I, I, I will, but I will. I will. I will. What is drive? What is the drive? So that maybe you can pass the drive to me. Let's go and vote. I think it's a... <laughs> ah, this is exactly. Everybody has its own reason for voting. Um. <laughs> I, I'll tell you my reason for not voting. I get you. I feel you. But you can't just hold your arms and say that the government is not working. This and that. Yes, that I can't talk about when, it. When my auntie, don't, long time when, ago, when you don't when you don't like he's that neighbor. Him, but he's that neighbor. But kid, the biking chair, why one be because of It's better I just keep quiet. Okay, so I'm <laughs> going to vote because it's it's my right to vote for who mm -hmm. I believe in. Mm -hmm. But also, I feel 
it's important that we participate in in in, in who becomes our, our our leaders because we live in this country. This is yeah. our country. As much as all of us, some of us want to Jaffa and go, <laughs> some of us have to stay here because no matter how you try, you run. You can't outrun where you are. It's from. still going to meet you. The Nigeria will still happen to you there. You you can't go away with every one of your my family members. So not all of us can leave Nigeria. We have only this country. We have only this place as so, and we need to fix it. You have. As you want to vote. Difficult that it's going to be because I feel like we can. It should be as seamless as possible. Us, yeah. Um, Sending money right now, mm. but I have to go and go to my polling polling unit, go and join one long queue. It's only the only thing that I dread actually is the queue and the time I have to stay there under the sun to vote. But I was we shall still go and vote because our vote matters. Good our luck. voice matters. Good luck to you. <laughs> As for me, you see me like this. I'm going to hold my hands and, and steadily stay in my house while <laughs> I watch my husband. My husband is already fighting me for already saying I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to vote because to be honest, me you personally have lost hope in Nigeria. To be honest. It's going to, to be I feel as if that is not a dunya. Nigeria will still be the way because Hapa. Hapa there is hope. There is hope. Because there is if there is right? only one person that wants to make change, what about his cabinet? What about the minister? What about the governors? What about, there's, there's so much like strings that it's beyond your meal. I think it's beyond my one vote. But I just stay at home and pray. But isn't it isn't it better if you do your own part? I feel like if everyone will do his part, like I said, me, you I, do your me, best. I, do, I feel I do my best. I feel like best. my vote, other people do the I best. I feel like everyone, my vote is not going to count at the end of the day. <laughs> don't you think it's that? It's so I'm going to stay on that scorching <laughs> sun and be like Nigeria, it's the more. No, I'm not going to go for. Please, I will pray in my room to God. Please help Nigeria. Where? Please help Nigeria. You have to do something before God will help you. I'm doing my own bit. <laughs> You're not doing your bit. My, you my, my prayer can go a long way for Nigeria. Go and vote. Oh. Go and vote. Guys, go and vote. Don't, don't be like Zainab. <laughs> go and vote. <laughs> my husband is going to hit this part. Go and vote, please. <laughs> don't be like me. I might end up um, deciding to go and vote. But we never can tell. It depends yeah. on how I feel, the mood. Let's, let's if go if I go to the bank and give me the money I've been going to, to ask them for <laughs> then I can vote. So now we're, we're really going to the topic for, topic of the day, guys. We're just going into it now. <laughs> so I was discussing entitlement today. See, for me, yeah, I believe the moment you realize and you accept that nobody owes you anything, not your mother, not your father, not your sister. Not anybody. From that moment, you begin to thrive. That's that's my own belief, to be honest, and that's that's like the greatest motivation for me. Mm. Nobody owes you anything. Like this, the reason why I chose this topic was because of this recent saga of Siama and have you Abdul, have you and Gusto, Abdul Gusto. Gusto. <laughs> so people are, are haven't heard the story. So a guy to, planned to take a girl to a date on a date. So she she invited three or four of her friends, right? Three, three of her friends. <laughs> so they, she, they took she, he, the guy came to take the girl out, not knowing that they, she, they're going to be third wheeled or even yes, third wheelers, three of them actually. So he had a budget definitely. When they got there, they ordered food beyond his budget. He couldn't talk. They finished eating. They were finally ordering another food. The guy ran away and left them. So in this case. Please, who is to blame? Before we dive into our <laughs> conversation, <laughs> putting on the hot seat. Should I go first no, 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 to no, tell no, you who no, is no, to blame? No, no, no. Like, let me see. Who is to blame? Is there? Who, everyone has. Both of them. Everyone has. Both everyone, parties. Both parties are to blame. But I blame the girl mostly because. Yeah. She says it's for security reasons. One of your friends is not enough to go with you on this date. Or maybe your little brother at home. You have to take three, oh, three, 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 three friends. friends. And then also... <laughs> ordering food, 250,000 naira. And, and they she, were planning on she, take Abdul, out. At the Abdul Shikuma, he could have said something. Okay, I'm taking you guys out. This is my budget. 
Like be honest. I from Zimbabwe do keep much at you. So just some to break I know men that can do that. Because maybe when they are ordering like, oh you guys, my budget is this. Yes. You guys cannot pass this. So yeah, he should have spoken up. Should have, should have spoken said up. something, but then <laughs> it happened. And it happens Actually, a lot. But they said that it didn't happen any. It didn't happen. It happened. happens a lot. I read like stories about relating to all these issues. There's another guy, south, not even in the north. He, he he planned to take the girl on a date. She got only one third wheeler. So um, they got there, they ordered, and he was way beyond past his budget. Do you know that this guy left his wristwatch there? And to top it on, the girl left him. The girl, he's broke. Okay. If you don't have money, guy, speak up. If a girl really loves you, you would stay. I don't understand. It's really yeah. tough, man. I you guys are really I'm trying. Really... <laughs> It is, and um, like you said, people are entitled. She shouldn't have felt people entitled people feel, yes, to, his money. to his money. They can't afford the money. So why do you expect someone to be able to afford the expenses that you guys are incurring? Like when even I didn't change for the love of God, that would be up to 220,000. People were saying that <laughs> 220,000, five euros, and I agree. Your house, even your father. So one your of the brothers had to come <laughs> or girls to settle on this note. We're going to pray again for Nigeria. Yeah, Let's take a God moment please. to pray for Nigeria. Let the elections hold safely. Let there be less rigging because rigging is sure. <laughs> Let there be less with no chaos, <laughs> with no killings, nothing. Mm. I wish us the best of luck and the best of elections. Mm -hmm. Au revoir. Uh -huh. Happy elections. See you after we get a new president. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you, you thank for, you for coming. Me. Thank you for I had coming. An amazing time today. So thank you very much, you guys. This is the best episode this season. Should please go out and let let no my let let my other guests know. <laughs> no, all of you are sweethearts. I love yes. you. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, so bye, care. guys. Until next, I always forget, guys. Yes, please. There's the YouTube sh shorts because it's a short. Is like just extracts from the whole um, clip so you guys i always put the link the podcast link you could just listen to it as you're cooking or you're driving i always enjoy my podcast when i'm driving or i'm cooking or i'm doing something that i can't sit down and watch a screen so guys please i need you guys to listen to the podcast too because that's where you hear the bulk of the conversation the full conversation so always Go back to the podcast, guys, please. Thank and listen you. to the full juice. Please, yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>